So I'm Thomas and uh, I work at Argon, so I'm really focused on more on, on Intel hardware. So if you have any good question, it will be not me to answer. But maybe what is relevant for this talk is I work a lot on runtime, right? I, I try to understand how SQL is implemented, what kind of SQL code we are doing and everything. So I will use this talk also maybe to, because I like this topic, to, to discuss this kind of thing, how like we discuss this uh, event that it is a little expensive, how to do this mapping. Maybe what I want to maybe teach you or is like to not be afraid of SQL and try to dig what is SQL is doing. We have always asked this question, oh, what is the SQL overhead or something like that? So uh, I would try just to say you is that you can check, right? You can see by yourself how the runtime is doing, what the how the kernel is compiled, and all of this kind of thing. So this is maybe the second goal of this topic. And the main goal is to, to discuss multiple devices. So in the MPI, I mean in the HPC, we have two, maybe two kinds of people. Maybe the traditional is one MPI rank per devices or more than one MPI rank per devices. So, and after you play with the CUDA visibility or this kind of thing, or the one API visibility. So each process is HPI rank, we'll see only one devices. So here we'll not talk about that, right? This one is really like the naive option. And this one have more or less nothing to do with SQL because for the SQL point of view, you will see only one devices. Here, what we want to show is how you handle if you have only one MPI rank and this MPI rank want to use more than one devices. Because for example, I don't know, it's more natural for your code to, to split it this way. You really, you want, you don't want to deal with MPI to do some uh, GPU to GPU communication. You, you don't trust MPI to have a, a good usage of NVLink or something like that. You say, okay, I will do it manually. I will handle all this kind of GPU to GPU communication, or I know my system can allocate memory on more than one GPU because they have, I don't know, this kind of really big USM stuff. And so I want for a reason or another use multiple GPU from one MPI rank. And this is what we'll discuss. And yeah, please, please, please do. It's always weird to, to talk alone. <laughs> so please don't hesitate to stop me at any time. I really don't mind that. I prefer that. So uh, before talking about multi-device, we need to, to discuss about context. So I will do a little context introduction, then the dependencies and moving some data between devices. And after I will show you some example and we can more dig in more into the runtime some open question I have also with the runtime because I don't use that much the CUDA backend of uh, Intel DPC++. And we can have a, a collective chat about everything. So, so in the context, and I think it is, uh, don't quote me on it, I think in CUDA driver, they have also this notion of context in CUDA runtime, I think it's really totally hidden for you. But, uh, so, and it comes from, I think, OpenCL for this one is really clear from, we borrow the same kind of concept from OpenCL. So the memory resources and the execution of a platform is bound by your context. So that means when you do an allocation, this allocation is only valid in this kind of context, right? You cannot, and this is a key point, a memory allocation is bound to a context. You cannot use a memory if it is not from the same context, right? It will just not work. And if it's work, it's totally uh, undefined behavior, right? So you should not do that. Uh, the good thing is like a context can represent more, one or more devices, but all the devices might be associated with the same platform, okay? So you have a platform as a high level, each platform is going to have multiple devices, and you can create a context of these multiple devices in this platform. So this is the, the first notion to one. So here, for example, we have a system uh, with an open OpenCL, AMD OpenCL, and the host platform. 
uh, as a matter of fact, I have a box in my uh, <laughs> in my uh, in my desk in my uh, office where I have exactly that. I think I have an Intel GPU, an AMD GPU, and uh, NVIDIA GPUs on the same box, and I run sync on 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 all of them. And this is how you work. You have a CPU, GPU. So this one are the platform. And here are the devices. I mean, sorry, this one are the, the platform, and inside those platform, you may have multiple devices. And how this work is like maybe most of you'd never heard about context. It's because when you're creating a queue, you're implicitly creating a new context, right? So when you create a queue, you implicitly create a new context. And this context, just call the regular uh, device manager and we choose a, a device to put on this context right so this is how it works and this is why you you didn't know about it and uh, a matter of fact when you do an allocation maybe it's a little thing i don't know if you notice but when you do an allocation when you do sql malloc you pass a queue as a parameter but you don't need to do dot wait Right. In all the other API, you take a queue, you submit a command, and after you get an event and you need to wait. When you made with when you do a malloc, you use a queue, but you don't submit a command, right? The queue is just from the queue, you can have the context and the device. So we'll so the runtime will allocate memory on this context. So this is why you need to pass a context to the malloc and a queue. From the queue, you can get back to your context and to your devices. So this is this is why you you pass a queue to malloc. But if you want, you can pass also a context and the devices. I say previously, <coughs> in order to answer to move data between devices, you can create a common context. So you can create a real source of an example. It's really trivial. The context constructor take multiple devices. So you can create a context with multiple devices. And when you do that, you will be able to transfer data between one, one of the two devices. I will show you an example. It would be far clearer. <coughs> and then uh, you can reuse this context to create as many queues as you want from this context. So for example, here, we have a shared context who is using the CPU and the GPU because they are both on the same platform. And then from this context, I create a queue will target the CPU and I will target a queue will target the GPUs. And no problem, it worked out of the box. So here, the, the creation of the implicit context. So you see, you have a, a queue. From the queue, you, you will use default selector V to choose the devices, and from these devices to create an implicit context. Or if you want to be uh, more explicit, from the context, you can pass a list of devices. Or also, if you want, if you want to put all the devices, this kind of a, a nice shortcut, it saves you to do platform.getDevices and pass that to the context. You can create a context for a platform. And in this case, all the devices of this platform will be part of your context. Does that make sense to everybody for now? How to, to create a multiple context. <clears throat> Perfect. So, uh, and this thing is only useful for people. Uh, I mean, it can be useful for multiple things. For example, I don't know if you want to be sure that you have multiple MPIs and you want to be sure that each rank will use a, 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 another devices or something like that, you can use this kind of context to be able to do this kind of thing. But I think it's mostly useful if you want to target multiple devices from the same uh, process. If you want to target multiple devices, uh, for example, if you want to, you, you implement like, like here a task runtime, 
So you have already a task and you want to submit towards the GPU and you don't want to, to have this kind of distributed shared between, uh, between MPI rank. You want to do load balancing. So for example, you want to submit a little work from one devices and the other from the other devices. Or as I said before, a super large memory allocation will not fit in one devices, but may fit in your own devices or this kind of thing. It's possible. And I think this is really the key point is like, the data is moving between devices in the context efficiently, right? So uh, for example, on NVIDIA, you want to use NVLink. If you want to, to send data from one device to another device, you don't want to spend, to, to use a PCIe who is super slow. You want to use really this kind of uh, GPU to GPU communication. So this is really the, the goal of this thing. <coughs> so this is exactly key. What he's saying is like in HPC or in many other application, you, you want to, to move the data from one device to another. I mean, if you really need to, I guess it's far better to move kernel <laughs> from one device to another, it will be faster. It's always a bad idea to move memory, but sometimes you need. So when you need memory, at least you don't want to pay the price of PCIe. So you want to another. In the USM model, uh, you, if you really want to do it, you can use a mem copy. So you will do a mem copy for uh, one data transfer, right? If you allocate device, device are bound to a device, a device allocation are bound to a device. So if you want to access it in another device, you do a mem copy from this device memory to the other things. So you can also use a will see later that you can use other things and main copy if you don't want to duplicate the data. But this one will be always portable and will always work. Or if you, as we said before, if we, you think it is a little uh, tedious to really handle the main copy, to put all the dependencies and everything, you can just reuse a buffer and accessor. And the buffer is accessor are working between multiple devices, multiple contexts, multiple everything because they will under they are they are they hide this complexity from you so they will just do the dependency analysis and after they do some query to the runtime do they support uh i don't know some usm specific uh, things or not so do are they part in the same context and all of this kind of thing it would work for you so this one is more high level and this one is more low level way of doing things You see, so this is here we say with the, the, the beauty of uh, accessor, it's like a buffer will move the data to a device, right? So everything is implemented for you. For example, here we have an accessor with using a device and a NOS memory and a device memory. So the accessor will handle everything for you. At runtime, they will do some check. Is this memory present, not present? If it is not present, they will move it and everything. And if you are, using uh, the same context, then the accessor uh, will do something. And I think this one, uh, it is maybe more, I don't know, uh, implementation detail, how the runtime can behave. If the runtime have more capabilities, maybe you don't need to, to duplicate the data, for example, if they know that you can access, for example, if it is an integrated GPU, you don't need to duplicate the data or whatever. But let's say in this case, we have an Intel CPU, an Intel GPU is discrete, and you cannot share the data. Uh, they, they will do any this kind of context, and data can be copied using the mem copy and everything, and everything will be hidden from you via the accessor. So this one is really a runtime who will do this kind of, uh, of mem copy, duplicating of memory and everything, because it will be only the same buffer for you. You don't need to duplicate the buffer. <coughs> so if they are not, well, we'll show some examples, but if they are not in the same context, that, do, that means you cannot do a few mem copy from one pointer to the other pointer, right? Because it is not possible. You are forbidden to transfer data from one context to another, right? This is the first thing, this is, if you need to remember one thing is this thing, 
It's like you cannot send data, you cannot access data from one context to another. But it's okay, you can still <laughs> you can still do it. You just need to use a, a proxy. So you need to allocate some uh, host memory. Maybe host memory is not the 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 best term because it's not a, it's not SQL host, right? It's a malloc memory. So you malloc a host buffer who has nothing to do with SQL, and after you just copy the GPU memory to this host buffer, and after this kind of thing. So for example, sometime before this NVLink magic or like uh, that MPI was CUDA aware, this is what MPI was doing, right? MPI was doing this kind of, okay, I will create a host memory copying from this host and after send it back to another rank. So this is what you need to do if you are not in the same context. So you can understand that here you are fast, you don't need to have the host memory. Here you are slow because you need to have the host memory. <coughs> Any question for now? After we'll do some example with the real code, maybe it would be clearer for you. Um, Thomas, I have a question. Um, can the Intel GPU send data direct to the AMD GPU if uh, by like specifying a the same a um, one context for both devices. Yeah, so it's a good question. So, so as we saw before, uh, the contexts are per platform, right? So you can create only context per platform, and uh, as we'll see also in parameter. So the question, really, what you're asking is like, can the Intel GPU and the AMD GPU be on the same platform? Right? <laughs> this is. This is what you are asking. And most of the time it's no. They are oh. not in the same platform. Uh, uh, because yeah, because I don't have much experience with that. So if, for example, if my desktop has two NVIDIA GPUs, um, maybe one is, for example, one is V100, the other is A100. So is it right that uh, both GPUs um, are not <clears throat> in the same platform? Is that right? Exactly, exactly. And we'll see in parameter, uh, spoil in parameter, I don't ask me why. I'm not the, <laughs> the correct answer. In parameter, each GPU and in a different context, sadly, in a different platform. So oh. in parameter, you have four platforms. And in each platform, you have one GPU. Don't, I'm not so maybe some code plate people can, can chime in when we do the demo to, to ask why. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, well, it's it's kind of um it's a workaround for the moment. It's it's a to-do um platform isn't really working as we wanted to in DPC++ at the moment, but in some ways it's not exactly necessary. Um, we started using the primary context, the primary CUDA context for each queue, and this kind of means that the default behavior for, say, sickle mem copies and all this kind of thing just falls back to the, the default behavior for, for the CUDA API. The CUDA driver API. So we're able to kind of dodge a bullet um, with the platform. So it, it is in high priority to figure out um, how to implement platforms in a way that's that's kind of meaningful for SQL. But uh, there has been some discussion as well about deprecating the SQL context entirely, just because it's in some ways it's a relic of, of OpenCL. Um, and it maps to different kind of back-end contexts differently. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a can of worms, to be honest. Yeah, all this kind of uh, context and everything is kind of... Uh... Yeah, it's... I think we, yeah, we need maybe some use cases from user and everything to, to give us a thing, but... Exactly, yeah, exactly. I mean, like... Um... Users can pretty much do everything that they want with the current setup, which is um, where each, say, queue is associated with the primary context. Uh, and that's just, there's one primary context per device, as in, uh, so you can have multiple queues referring to the same device. They naturally share the same native context. Um, you can pretty much do everything that you really, really need to do. Uh, and if there's a very, very specific use case uh, that's very, very low level and you need to have multiple CUDA contexts uh, for a single for a single CUDA device, then um, probably SQL is too high level for you anyway, maybe. Uh, but we, we've 
we've tried to find out if there are use cases that really, really need this. And we've done a lot of like research and apart from very, very kind of contrived examples, we can't think of like uh, obvious cases where this is this is important. But these these are all implementation details as well. So it's it's not really um, maybe relevant to, to this discussion. Yeah, okay. I can can ask more questions when I will do some demo and I have some yeah, questions sure. with you. Perfect. Um, Thomas, yep. I ask you a question because you in your slides, previous slide, you mentioned that if if the two devices are not in the same platform, then data have to be <clears throat> uh, data from one device has to go through the host memory. Um, but um, I know that uh, in in like you know, Nvidia GPU we have like as you mentioned NVLink, so direct copy. So exactly. I assume that there's some ways that uh, uh, data can still be copy directly from one device to device, even though uh, the two devices are are not in the same platform. Yeah, so you, you have a good point. So I think now it's start being a little, how can I say? It's between the difference between what is implemented and what the spec is saying. Yeah. So the fact that in DPC++ right now, you can do maybe a copy from this GPU to this GPUs, yes. and it will work. It's yes, implementation detail on DBC plus plus, and it's not portable. <laughs> this is oh, what I want okay. to say. But maybe the so right now this is the sad truth. But maybe the what we want to do in SQL next or what? In, so now it's a question: is like should we fix the spec to allow this kind of thing, or should we speak DPC plus plus? For example, I would be curious to see what HipSeeker is doing. Does HipSeeker show all these devices in the same platform or not? Mm. So, I, I can't speak for, for HipSeeker and platforms, but HipSeeker uses the, the CUDA primary context as well, um, which is what we're doing. So it defaults to the, the kind of CUDA uh, driver behavior. So if you do a mem copy from you know GPU1 to GPU2 or Q1 to to Q2, it should it should um, default to uh, you know the the fastest way that your your system can do it, or the, the way that the CUDA uh, yeah. runtime okay. or driver API would do it naturally. Yeah, so I think it is always like when you write in C plus plus or in C or whatever, you rely on some undefined behavior because it makes it faster. <laughs> but maybe and maybe you don't care because everybody will implement in this kind of thing, but. So maybe it's a small problem that for the user you can do uh, you can do this directly. I will show some example from this queue to this queue, and it should work. It will work. The question is how can we make it compliant to the specification and stuff like that. So I think it is this sort thing still ongoing, and we have some issues. So if we have any any feedback, it would be appreciated. But yeah, at least in theory. Uh, your code will be less portable if you really rely on that. For example, with an open CL backend or this kind of thing, it will not work. Yeah, so here, uh, so because between, between CPU and GPU, if it is a discrete GPU, indeed, you, you always need to have uh, some uh, some copy. So here, for example, it is, uh, let us assume a CPU and a discrete GPUs, and uh, you, you have a buffer and you access this from kernel A for kernel B. And for you, in the code, it's just you, you create a buffer and after you create an accessor and after you create another buffer and accessor and you just submit to two different queues. And you see internally, the runtime is doing, okay, I will copy the data to the CPU, and then I create a temporary variable to create to the GPUs, and after another temporary variable, and another put data and everything. And this is what you need to do if you want to be uh, really sure. And after you can do some implement, some you know optimization. Maybe this temporary this temporary is ne not needed because you have some kind of I don't know USM between the two, so the GPU memory can read the CPU memory because you have a uh, you are in a kind of an integrated world and everything. So a lot of things can be optimized by the runtime. 
So I think this is what I like in this buffer accessor approach. It's like in theory, uh, your code, you write it in a portable manner. And after it is a runtime to figure out on the hardware, you are actually running right now what kind of it is the best path to do, which kind of data I need to, to optimize away on everything. If not, you need to do that. And after you need to optimize yourself this path if you change hardware or something like that. Or if you know that you are running on a specific implementation that supports certain thing or whatever. But at least here, you have the full control exactly as you will have done in a lower level. So in this case, uh, SQL is really a thin layer of abstraction up to the chain. So maybe we can do some uh, uh, demo right now. So I am, it is something called load balancing, but let me put it bigger. And uh, bear in mind, I think that should say exercise. Um, is it four? Is yeah, it in the slide, yeah, I think, yeah. I think it's load balancing now. I think we re rename the name or something like that. So I think now, because I think I am in the, yeah, in the good branch. So exercise zero three load balancing, but I will write some code just to show you. So let's start with a, a little code just to, to see you if you if you follow. So let's see. So Thomas, you're still sharing. Oh yeah, you're right. It's because I didn't share my, uh... ah, okay. Every, so... Everyone's gonna do that today. <laughs> <laughs> desktop two. Yes. Can you see my nice desktop? Yeah, looks yeah. right. So I am in exercise zero of three load balancing, but right now I will do write some live coding. Just you can make fun of my coding skills. So just to see if you, if everybody was listening carefully. So I create a first Q, Q1. From this Q1, uh, I will do a SQL, malloc, devices, uh, one Q, okay. Uh, let's say uh, it's an int, I don't care. Yeah. So, okay, I create this queue and after I create another queue, SQL Q2, and I will use this pointer, right? I will do queue.single task. And uh, here in my bracket, I will do, uh, I will do PTR0 equal to. Okay, so what do you think? Is this code should run, should not run? <laughs> so what do people think after all this, all this debate? Don't be shy, you, you can say. And you cannot have any wrong answer, I think. So anybody have a guess? Yeah, I think the queues are created with two contacts. So, and the Q2 wants to access the uh, uh, data in, uh, in, in the, I think, in uh, created by in another context. So, I don't think it will work. Yeah. So, you are totally correct in the spec point of view. This code is wrong and should not work because, as you say, as we saw before, Q1 and Q2 will implicitly create a context. Absolutely. Those contexts will be different between, because this is what the specs say, it's like they will create a new implicit context. So this code should be wrong and it should not work. And of course, if you try to, to compile that. So I am in an interactive node and I don't know how to write a code. So I need a semicolon here. Let's see how many pages of C++ error we have. I need to capture everything. <laughs> oh. What did I do? Did I do? This, this is actually, this is a really uh, interesting, whatever, little small bug, but can anyone explain why we need to capture things by value? 
Um, so you've very uh, yeah, exactly. you said it by reference. No, oh, please go ahead. Oh, so this one, yeah, I'm not really, I, I think it's because pointer here, it's, we need, it's something like that, right? We need to translate pointer. This is correct. This is what. So if we capture pointer by reference, then we're capturing the address of um, the pointer, which is in host memory. Hey, exactly. So when we try and dereference that, or when we try and look up what pointer, you know, what the value of pointer is on the device, then we'll we'll get some, you know, we're we're not able to do that. Yeah, exactly. So this we should not change the value of this pointer, right? This I mean <laughs> this pointer is valid on the device, so we should pass it as as is. So this is a not really. so if you look at the code, it, it seemed to run. I think I didn't stack fault and everything. And uh, and if you look at the, if you look at if you do more tests, you will see that this code is working. And it is true in most applications that this code is working. So because uh, it is a bug right now in the spec that this behavior is really weird. That thinking that it will not work. So we have an extension that we need to ratify that everybody is implementing that these two will create the same context, that you have an implicit context which is not per, is not per queue, it is per device, and each device will have this kind of implicit context and reuse. So, so in theory, this code should not work, but it's too painful and nobody assumes that this code will work. So in this case, we, we are doing something uh, with, uh, we make it work, and I think this one will be fixed. I think in SQL next, uh, because it's quite a change in the code. In theory, this code, just to be clear, this code is uh, should not work. You can define the error, but work on that, but work on the thing. So here, I think it's also assumed that uh, when you create these two queues. Uh, they are actually associated with the same device, right? Not with exactly device. good code. Okay, exactly good code. Good code. So the thing we can do is like as usual, you should trust nobody. You can do get device. You get the device, and you can do q two dot get device. You can do this kind of thing if you want to check. Or better is more. To, is really more to check the, the context. The context should be the same. As we said before, it's really something about context and not really about devising. So what we need to do is like if this queue.get context is the same queue as this get context, right? So this is the same. This is what really we need to, to assume. But because this one, the spec doesn't say anything about which context and which device right now. Mm -hmm. So you should not write a code like this if you really want to be portable. If you want to be portable, you should not use implicit queues and implicit uh, context. So, and the thing to, to show you is if you do, for example, SQLLS, so SQLLS, uh, I think, it is a little tool developed by, uh, I think it is provided by TPC++. We just list all the platform and all of the devices. And you see here, uh, I have four platform. This is here, four platform and four, four devices. So that means, in theory, I cannot uh, send data from this device from this other device uh, by the spec, right? But uh, I can be <laughs> because, because of the implementation details. So I think you, you can rely on that. So. This is maybe the, the little trick. So just, I will show you how to write just a, a verbose version or the, 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 if you want to be portable. So how you do, you create a SQL platform, P from this, and then from the queue, you create a SQL uh, context from this platform, right? So we saw that I think the, the context has a platform description. So now you, you have multiple devices and now you can do, for example, p uh, c dot get devices uh, zero, uh, get devices zero and c dot get devices one. 
And I think this is uh, what the example is about. Okay. And in this case, now, this code will, will work perfectly. This code is portable and will work everywhere because now I use two devices, but those devices are in the same, uh, sorry. Let's see, the constructor is you, you take a context and after you get, you take a device from this context. And you see here, the code is really portable and should run everywhere. For example, on Int, I don't know on AMD hardware, I never try, but on Intel hardware, you, all the devices are part of the same context. So you can do this kind of thing and this code will be portable and you can do now data transfer directly. So for example, if I do uh, PTR1 and PTR2, no, I can do q one copy or copy, I never know, uh, PTR1 to PTR2. Whatever, I think it's copy int. I never know which one is which. But this code will, will not work. It will work because this, this thing is portable. Sadly, it will not work here because we have only one device, <laughs> not one device. We have only one device per platform. So this is the. So, and I think if you look at the, the sources, the example is that here, we do the same thing. You can get all the available devices. You can create a queue with the devices. You can create a buffer and you can all do this kind of thing with the, the buffer and accessor. The good thing is like, it's allow you to do a little shield you from the sign of the solution. So you see, because when you, you create a buffer, and when you, when you create a buffer, right, you, you don't specify any queue, any context, anything, right? So this is really the good thing with buffer. It's like it, it shields you for all this complexity and everything. So after you just create a buffer and after you submit to whatever you want, it doesn't matter. And it creates a buffer and after you do the thing. And now we always have this question. It's like, this, does this thing is doing a... a We'll do that. So we have, uh, you saw, we have two devices. Uh, get two devices, let's see this function. So you see, you, you just look at, oh, so this one is dev GPU and dev CPU and all of this kind of thing. And the question is like, does this thing, how many data transfer will do this thing, right? Because you may have one CPU, one GPU, two GPUs. And the question is like, you should never trust the runtime, right? Because the runtime may have bugs and everything. What you want to do is to always profile and trace the code. So for example, I will compile a solution.cpp. And maybe this is the most important thing about this talk is to Never trust the runtime, I think <laughs> this is really important. It's like, please always profile your code, C and everything. And after, for example, here, I can just use a NCs with NPProf on this thing, and we can see how many data transfer is doing. And all of uh, all of this thing, for example, here, we see we have a host to device, device to host. We did six H2 device, two device to host. And after you can see if it is really what, what you think the runtime have been done, if it is not what you think the runtime have been done, and if it is not what you think, please, please open a, a bug report or something like that. It's really help the implementer improving their code and also the, the runtime people and or the specification to maybe improve everything. So we have a little, a little plugin to please profile your code. And you see here all you see all the code. So you can see, for example, we create a 10 stream and we launch kernel and all this kind of thing. And and in theory, we should yeah, we should have seen this uh, setting the primary context and all of this kind of thing. So yeah, so in conclusion, uh we have a little disagreement right now on between the behavior 
of the DPC++ could have backend and the SQL specification, but it will be fixed later. So, but right now for your application, you can, uh, it is safe on DPC++ and NVIDIA to, to be able to just create multiple queues and to transfer from one queues to another. And this behavior will also work on other hardware because all the implementation already implements this uh, default context, where the default context have all the devices on the platform. So it will work. It's just something we need to do at the spec level to be able to clarify that, that common use case of application are working. Do we have any question? I hope I was kind of clear between the. Um, I, I think I'm, I'm just want to ask a question because, for example, in, in, in your current target plan, for you have four GPUs and the uh, NVIDIA GPU, and then you specify uh, four queues for these four GPUs. Then, if you want to transfer uh, data from one GPU to another GPU, um, will, will it go through the host memory? Uh, if you do a mem copy? Yes, yes. Yeah, no, if you do a mem copy, so right now, yeah, if you just do a mem copy and it will not go, it will use uh, NVLink. So uh, okay. maybe not have time, but yeah, we can have a real small example where you do a Q1 and after Q2 and boom, you will mm -hmm. check and they will do, and after you do a mem copy and you will see you have a CUDA mem copy or H2D and not two. H to D and D to H or something like that, right? You will have a sorry a D a D to D copy, a device to device copy. This is what you will see if you profile. But don't trust me. Try <laughs> try it yourself and I verify. See. I see. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I think you should always always verify. Always don't trust anyone. But in my guess, it's like if you do that, if you use one queue to allocate one memory key, one queue to allocate one memory here. And you yeah. do a mem copy from this one to this one. Here you will you will see could a mem copy D to D. If you see oh. two of them, it's a bug that we need to fix. I see. Okay. Uh, because I think you mentioned. Sorry, I'm confused. Because I think as you mentioned, uh, there are because we have oh yeah yeah it's a difference between what the specs say and what the implementation say. So I think as an application developer, maybe right now you don't care that much at what the specs say. I mean, it depends on your level of uh, pedanticity or something like that, at, at which point you want to be portable. But yeah, it is something we need. So right now, just do that and it will work. And we need to work on our side as an implementer spec writer to, to clarify that to this kind of behavior to be, uh, to be available. Yeah, okay, yeah, I, I, will, I will try, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I might also uh, just mention, so there's a peer-to-peer -peer extension in DVC++, which aims to kind of clarify, you know, whether peer-to-peer -peer is possible, you know, if it's going to be used, that kind of thing. Um, and yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll link the PR here. Um, it's not merged yet, but you should still, or what, no, have I, I pinned it to the wrong place, sorry. Yeah, so we are looking also for yeah, for people, if people are interested in this topic and want to to help the specification or the writer or something, like please, please reach to us. I think we are, it's always good to have new people, new mindset on how to specify this kind of thing. Because here, as it was just say, we are doing queue.main copy, but sometimes you have direct peer-to-peer -peer access. So one memory can be accessible from another devices. And how it will work is via like page migration, right? The mic or not. I mean, the, the memory can migrate from one device to another or something like that. So right now, this kind of thing are not really well specified in the spec. We have some something, but it's not really super well defined. So if people are interested of clarifying all this kind of uh, more advanced usage, we'll be more than happy to, to have some help and everything. I mean, yeah, I'm interested on this topic, but as everybody, <laughs> time is always short, so you need to choose your battle, but yeah. Any other questions for, for Tomana?
Yeah, maybe for most of the people, I think it's more common to use one MPI rank per device. At least this is what I saw in most of the application. So I think in this case, all of this thing <laughs> doesn't mean anything for you. So yeah, I think maybe it takes this. I don't want to, to give the impression that it's complicated or something like that. I think the behavior is well defined. We just need to, it's an open specification. And we just need to improve the specification and something like that. But it is really driven by user need and by user usages. So I think it's really important to give any feedback you have or something like that. And right now, yeah, just, just create multiple queues and send data between multiple queues. It should work. And I think it's me also for something far less uh, contentious and really more <laughs> well-defined with a reduction anatomic and all of this kind of thing. <laughs>